jittery in Japan overnight with the markets. Declan can hopefully tell us more. Well, Japan was down by around 5.5%. That's the uh, Nikkei 225, the main share index in Tokyo. But London is going to take its lead from New York last night, which had a Lazarus-like revival in the last hour of trading. Shares clawed back 300 points. So the New York index uh, ended down just 15 points. That means London is now on course to actually go up. Shares in the UK likely to rise 80 points when trading starts in the next uh, 10 minutes or so. But we had a fairly tough day yesterday. Shares down by 4%, the worst performance in four years. Why on earth is any of this happening? Well, the problem stems from America's mortgage crisis. When borrowing was cheap, U.S. banks gave mortgages to low-paid people with poor credit ratings. They could afford those mortgages when uh, interest rates were low, but when interest rates started to rise, then they started uh, being unable to pay those mortgages back, and that cost the banks hundreds of billions of pounds. The problem doesn't stop with those American mortgage lenders, though, because they had spread their risk. They had sold on the debts that they had taken on to other banks all around the world, and we don't yet know which bank has how much debt, whether it be in Europe, Asia or in the United States. And that is what is at the root of this problem. That uncertainty has made the banks nervous about future loans, so they've tightened up their lending to big companies and big private equity investors. That's what caused the fall in share prices last week. The banks have also tightened up their lending to each other, which means mortgage companies that borrow money to then loan on to us as mortgages, companies like the Northern Rock, are now finding the credit is not so easy to come by. That's what's caused the fall in share prices this week. So there are three different problems going on. One is a problem with the banks themselves. They're not going to make so much money. Two is with the lending system. That's been squeezed. And three is what this means for the economy and broader consumer spending if people are worried about share prices and if interest rates are rising and borrowing is becoming more expensive. Let's talk to David Braithwaite. He's one of our regular financial watchers here on uh, Breakfast and Citrus Financial Management. David, good morning to you. Morning. A 4% fall on the stock market sounds like bad news, but actually it isn't as bad as it sounds. It's not really, no. When you actually zoom out and look at the bigger picture, when you look at these investment graphs, you see a sudden dip, and over the last four days you've seen it drop quite dramatically. But when you look back at the wider picture over the last few years, it's actually really only a blip. And if anything, now is probably a good time for people to actually look at investing money. If they can afford to tie up money, take the risk and take a long-term view, it's probably not a bad time to think about investing. When you're thinking about things like your pension, you know, the headlines this morning say £60 billion pounds wiped off the value of shares. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean our pension savings are £60 billion lower this morning than they were yesterday morning. No, again, and it is a long-term view that you've got to look at. A pension plan is a long-term investment. And whilst it will make a bit of a blip for people maybe that are looking to retire immediately now, in the long term, it's not a bad wake-up call for people to actually look at their portfolios maybe they've got in savings, investments and pensions. And maybe when things are going well for them, and it's a bull market, maybe get out and maybe lock it into things like gilts and treasury stocks and such like, which at the moment are doing very, very well. Now, there is some talk about people who are close to retirement might feel the effects of this in their pocket mm. more than others. But actually Actually, if you're close to retirement, you shouldn't have that many shares in your pension fund anyway. You shouldn't have, no. If you, if you plan well, you shouldn't have. But also, bear in mind, over the last few years, we've had a really good run. So actually, again, coming back to what I said earlier, it's just a little blip. So I wouldn't think it's too much for people to worry about at this stage. OK, David Braithwaite from Citrus, thank you very much for joining us here at the Stock Exchange. More after it. See you then. Thanks, Declan. Thank you.